All right. Well, I'm going to keep the line open. It's 8.06. Um, so I want to dive right in. I want to welcome each and every one of you who are a part of Double Vision, right? And Double Vision is really truly about developing hope creators. So 30 seconds, I just want to tell you guys that, um, you know, back in the day when I was a high school English teacher, I really truly didn't want to just teach high school, right? I really got involved because you know, I had a heart for young people. Uh, I actually started a young program, a young man's program called SOS Saving Our Sons. And I had about 65 young men that would come to my room every single Thursday. And I would actually go and get men to come in and speak with them because most of them were raised by uh, single parents. And for anybody out there that's a single mother or a single father or a single aunt or uncle or you're you know, you're the mother or father to children, you know that it takes a village. Um, and really quickly, I was teaching high school and kids cannot use their cell phones at our school. We had over 4,000 students at the school and they went to no cell phones, right? There was only one student that I allowed to use his cell phone. And it was a kid. He was actually from, you know, the Middle East. His parents had lived in the um, United States most of their life. He was born in the U.S., um, but his parents really truly believed in uh, education. Not that we don't here in the United States, but, you know, we always have this, this idea that young people are the problem. And honestly, it's the exact opposite. I've found that uh, I love teaching. I didn't like the politics or the pay or sometimes the parents, <laughs> But the students I absolutely loved because they were pure. And if you treat them with respect, they will treat you with respect. You know, that's what I found. Um, so this student was in my class and I asked him to, hey, you need to put your phone up. And he said, I'm in the middle of my trade. He was 15. I didn't have any idea what he was talking about because I played volleyball. I went to school. I got a degree. I did everything that they told me I was supposed to do to have a great life. And this kid is sitting in my class making $1,000 a week on his cell phone, right? And I said, okay, hold on, explain. He said his parents had sent him to some kind of camp that he didn't want to go to. It was all about financial literacy. And he was learning how to trade on the open market, the Forex market. That was the first time that I had ever heard of it. And for those of you guys who know, I mean, we trade Nadex, but Nate, we trade Forex on the Nadex platform, right? Forex is a $7 trillion a day market. There is money for everyone, but you also have to respect the market. There's things that you need to know. Um, so I decided, uh, no, let me take that back. <laughs> I didn't decide anything. I feel like I put it out there that I want to still be in my purpose. I don't want to just be chasing money. And what I've found is from working at the bank and dealing with adults and their money, we are very emotional about our money, mainly because we've made mistakes. We are trying to pay bills. We're trying to take care of our families. We are growing older and we're realizing that we, we might feel like we're a little bit behind the eight ball and we got to like do things quickly. And in this type of market, you cannot do things quickly. You have to, everybody type in the chat really quickly. You have to learn first, okay? And I've talked to adults who are so in a hurry to jump into Nadex and they don't quite know what they're doing yet. They don't know that we're in a market that is election season for the United States. They don't understand that Donald Trump is super powerful, despite what you might think about him. He has made billions of dollars. He's lost money, made it back. He's a businessman. Um, and when he speaks, he moves the market. Good or bad, <laughs> he moves the market. So this is a time period where we should be learning about these markets, learning what it's like to trade on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, making our mistakes in our demo account. But I feel like some adults... Um, and the group, like they're in a hurry, right? And when you get in a hurry, you make mistakes. So uh, Quinn and Miss Keisha Brown are on here and I'm going to spotlight them. So, and we're just going to do a quick dialogue because uh, their son, Brayden, has taken a liking to the markets 
And last week, Brayden called me on the phone. Notice that I didn't say Keisha called me. <laughs> I didn't say Quinn called me on the phone. But Brayden at 12 years old called me on the phone and said, hello, Miss Megan. And we dialogued for probably 35 minutes. And by far, it was the most inspiring call that I've had in <laughs> forever. <laughs> and it reminded me why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's not to make money. It's to really, truly connect with people and we learn together and then we earn together. So I want to introduce all of you um, to um, Mr. Uh, Braden Brown, and we're just going to have a conversation. So Braden, if you wouldn't mind, um, thank you that your mom's on here as well. And I know your dad's in the background, uh, but we want to dialogue because you called me and we had a conversation and um, tell me a little bit about yourself first. Maybe, you know, where you go to school, give me a little bit of information about maybe your likes and things that you are interested in. And then is it okay, Brayden, if we just have a conversation kind of like we had before? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. So how are you doing tonight? Good. Good. It's so good to see you. So Brayden, I'm going to give you the floor. Would you mind kind of introducing yourself to the folks on the call? Uh. My name, <clears throat> my name is Braden Brown, and I go to, I go to Blythewood Middle School, and I like to do sports. I like watching TV, and um, yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, and uh, I'm in the band also, and I so like bowling. Perfect. So we started talking about you being in the band, but you've also taken a liking to trading. So why all of a sudden do you, you know, how did you come to say, hey, mom and dad, I want to learn how to trade Nadex? How did that happen? Uh, mm, it happened when my mom was doing like some trades and she was just talking. Well, at this time, we was just having a lot of family time with each other during breakfast, sitting down with each other. And because my dad was busy with other things, my mom was usually at home sometimes. So she would start on some trades. And I, there's just one day that she... uh made a certain amount of money and even though it wasn't a huge amount like the 100 dollars that you one well, no, of the 600 that you told me about mm -hmm. on that uh call uh i was still interested when my dad was just talking to me to my brother and i and telling us how um it only takes a day to just learn how to trade and because a day to me would, would be fast and it wouldn't take a week or something like that, uh, I just decided that I should do some trades so I could get money because every, every kid that has a goal, well, every kid in middle school, if you ask them one like personal goal, It'll either be something with sports or something with just money. So my goal was to just make some money. Perfect. So, okay. So you heard them talking and your mom was consistently kind of making this $30 a day. It wasn't $100 a day, but you watched your mom put in the work. So you called me and you said, well, Miss Megan, I'm watching some videos, which I thought was amazing because you didn't say how much money can I make? You said, let me watch these videos first and I'm going to take some time and I'm going to learn. And, uh, $30 a day is a big deal to you. Is that right? Mm, yes, ma'am. Well, $20 was a big deal at first. <laughs> so $20 a day. So you and I started talking and we, we set some goals. So what are some things that you think are important for the adults to hear on here when it comes to learning how to trade? Like for you, like what, 
because I know you're not just going to jump into a live account. What what are you planning on doing so that you can learn how to make twenty dollars or thirty dollars a day? Um, I'm going to use my parents' demo account, but uh, what you told me first when you talked to me about the trades with the demo account was learning that you're going to win some and you're going to lose some. So there may be a day that you can make a hundred or fifty dollars mm -hmm. and there will be a day that you could barely make ten dollars. So you told me to just have patience and be ready for that stuff to happen. Absolutely. So it's been close to a week since you and I had a conversation and I'm going to get to your goals because we didn't just talk about Nadex. We talked about what $20 or $30 a day is like an extra 500 a month. So kind of keep it in the back of your mind because I want to talk about some some business goals that you and I talked about because it's important to point your money somewhere. And sometimes adults can look at $30 a day and it not be a big deal. But until you've learned how to consistently make $30 a day, you shouldn't be focused on making a hundred a day. <laughs> but what have you been doing since you and I talked um, last week? Cause when I was talking to, when we talked for 30 minutes, you were watching some videos, some of my videos. So what have you been doing for the last um, week? Cause I know you got band stuff to do. You have school, you're super busy. Obviously you can't trade during the day, right? <laughs> Cause you're at school. So what's your day look like? Because you have a super busy schedule. Um, what have you been doing to since last week to learn more about Nadex? Um, I've really been busy with like homework and stuff, but I know lately, I think Saturday, I got back on the Nadex video because the, the overview, I think, and I was about 14 minutes in, and I think now I'm at 28 minutes, but I know I have some notes with me just talking about um, the way that the things look. Like, you was talking about, um, you was talking about what you would see on a trade uh -huh. and mainly mainly you was just saying I know I was hearing a lot of being patient words and then you gave us the the four videos we needed to look at mm -hmm. just so we could uh get some more extra information on the trades but I really haven't been um doing any demo but i know this week i'm gonna get caught up back again but you and that's great though you're busy so you're not beating yourself up you're not oh my gosh oh my we got to pay this hundred dollars every single month and i'm so busy and i just don't you're just going with the flow right now because you have a busy schedule but you're setting a particular schedule and i think i am record i, I should be recording Yes, I'm recording, but so, so you're going with the flow. You have a busy schedule right now. You have some band stuff to do, but you're, I heard you say you're watching videos, you're taking notes, you're not in a hurry. Um, there's another gentleman, he's 19 years old. He's in college. I have a couple young people who are trading as well. And he stayed in his demo account for the last three months. He's been with us for three months. He just went live. And I said, man, that is so very honorable that you're 19 years old and he's been watching videos, he's been demoing, he's been journaling, and now he's consistently at about $30 to $50 a day. He's been sending me screenshots of what he's doing. And I said, you know what? Thank you for staying in your demo account for 90 days until you're, you're ready. So there's no hurry. Uh, I want to ask you one last question. And then if anybody wants to ask you a question, we can definitely do that because I know you got some things to do. But- we started talking about what $30 a day really is. And, and sometimes when we have a lot of money, we can just blow it. We talked about Michael Jordan. Do you remember me t telling you what Michael Jordan's problem was? 
uh, you said that Michael Jordan did a lot of gambling, yeah, and it and you was just seeing like for example how because he was at billionaire status at that time, he kept on losing. He, you was saying that he would lose a million. He could you he could lose a million dollars on gambling, but even though. He lost his billionaire status. He had nine hundred and ninety nine million dollars left, so it really wouldn't affect him in a big way. Absolutely. So as great as Michael Jordan is, he he had a problem and his problem was greed and gambling. And he had so much that he was just kind of throwing it away. But I also said, like, when you have a little bit you sometimes you can feel fearful that you're going to lose it. And that might be an indication that you shouldn't be in the markets yet either until you get to a certain point where you can conquer your greed. You can be patient. You're not gambling. And then you can respect the markets because there's seven trillion dollars in the market. Right. And so last thing I want to ask you real quick, because I know you got to go. Um, Five hundred dollars a month would be a big deal for you. Right. So, <laughs> well, if you're making, you have an extra, he's like, not now, right? I already know what's in the market, but we started talking about goals. I said, listen, if we start at $30 a day and that's an extra $480 a month, you're going to win some, lose some. And you told me that you wanted to start a business. What kind of business did you tell me you wanted to start? Um. I told you lawn, the lawn um, business, mowing lawns, but it really wasn't supposed to be a business. Well, it was going to be a business, but um, but I wasn't thinking of it being too much of a business, like a long-term thing, because I was really just thinking about getting some money because – my original plan was to make some money during mowing lawns and then I could hop over to Nadex and learn about it so I could do my own live account and, well, do the devil first, but do my own live account and um, just make money that way. Right. So we talked about like, pointing your money in, in a certain direction. Nadex doesn't have to be your life, right? It doesn't have to be the end all be all. But if you learn how to make $30 a day and you make an extra $400 a month, then you and I talked about what that $400 could really be. To adults, it might seem like, ah, oh, it's not really a big deal. But remember I said, how about we put together a vision board and a plan and consistently stay in your demo until you're consistently making $30 a day. And then you could take that money, buy a lawnmower, right? And now you can turn that $400 into potentially an extra $50 a day mowing lawns, right? And then we talked about franchising, right? Now you can move on to not just a push lawnmower, you can move on to making enough money so you can buy a Riding. riding. Now, what would that riding lawnmower do to your business? Yeah, it's just a measly 30 bucks a day, $400. Now you're cutting grass. You might be making an extra $100 a day or maybe, or, you know, $50 a day mowing different lawns. But what could you taking now that money and you buy a riding lawnmower do for your business? Do you remember what we talked about? Uh, I think you said how my friends would start seeing how I'm making money and then they would ask me um, if they could, if I could, either if I could teach them or if they could use mine. Well, I know the next thing that you said after those two things were, was how I could let them borrow it and then I could get like $5 a five dollars from what lawns they mowed or five percent I, I really don't remember but we'll work on those numbers I think we need to go a little <laughs> higher than five dollars but anyways that's neither here nor there depends on you know you might take a cut of what they're doing 
And I read this story. I was listening to uh, Steve Harvey and he said that one of his friends was making $10 million a year cutting lawns because he went from making money a certain way to having push lawnmowers, which all money really is, is like it's condensing time frame. So you're pushing a lawnmower. You can't cut nearly as many lawns like that, but you keep working on Nadex. You're making money. You're doing your push lawnmower business. Now you have enough money to get a riding lawnmower when you're able to drive that riding lawnmower, right? And then now you're able to cut twice as many lawns and make twice as much money. Now your friends are like, hey, can I be a part of your business? So now we talked about us putting together a plan where now you got this riding lawnmower, you can start franchising that business out. Or yeah, you can borrow the lawnmower, but I need this amount a day from what you're making. And now Nadex is way bigger because it's seed money for something else. Does that make sense? Oh, sure. So you and I, um, and I know you got to get going, but you and I are going to be putting together a vision board, right? Of all the things that you would like. And you said, when you start making consistent money, what are you going to, you said what you're going to do for yourself. You want to buy a phone, right? Which means you can make money on the go and talk to your friends <laughs> or play video games or whatever it is you do. You said that you want to get a lawnmower so that you can make more income. And then let's end on this. You said something pretty profound because you said, I want to do something for my family. And what was that thing that you said you wanted to do for your family? Uh, pay them to a dinner. I mean, well, not pay them to a dinner, but uh, buy like dinner for them. Yeah. So we're, and we kept saying, we kept like, okay, so where are we going? Because we have to start visualizing and be specific on our goals. And I think as adults, we forget to do that. We just are like making money. We don't think about it and we don't have specific goals. So I asked you, I was like, okay, great. You're going to take them to dinner. You don't need to take them to like a super expensive restaurant and blow all your money. But where'd you say that you would take your family? Cause, cause you guys enjoy that particular place. Do you remember? Uh, I remember. Yeah, I think it was it Panda Express. Yep, it was Panda Express. And, and I'm like, my kids used to love Panda Express. And don't you think you're you are gonna get these warm and fuzzies, right? When you can say, Hey, no problem, I got the bill, right? <laughs> I got the bill because I've been working hard for my money, but I want to do something nice for my my family. So I am just so extremely impressed by you. And I know you got band stuff to do tonight, so we're not going to hold you up. But um, I'm glad that you're being patient. I'm glad that your focus isn't on making money. It's on learning. I'm glad that we had an opportunity to not just talk about Nadex, but we got an opportunity to talk about what we could do with Nadex money and how we could grow Nadex money into a real business, potentially a franchise business. So you know, is there anything that you want to leave with the people before we we let you go? And then you're, I'll let your mom, if your mom or your dad wants to say something, is there anything that you want to tell us adults as we're on this journey to learning how to trade? Because it's not easy, just like you play the tuba, right? And you said you, you got you to learn, you got to practice. It's not easy, but you're learning. Is there anything that you want to tell the, tell us older folks not old folks, but older folks. <laughs> uh, uh, I I guess just having patience, but probably not only that, but I I know somebody said, well, was asking if they was wondering if that video was recorded so they could show it to their nephew. Uh. If there is any younger kids watching, my dad did tell my dad told me that once I get used to Nadex and once I'm making daily money, uh I could make start YouTube videos and just show people, show younger kids how to do Nadex so they can have parents joining in wondering why they're watching these videos 
and then they can start to build into an empire of just people doing daily trades. But the only thing to the older folk, well, not older folk, but just to everyone in general is to have patience Well, with uh, their money and taking their time. well, I just want to say thank you so much. I mean, you, it warms my heart. I, I really truly am living my purpose because, um, I really do love young people. And it's like out of the mouth of babes, the truth speaks. That just means out of young people's mouths, you guys only know how to be honest. You honestly sometimes don't know how to lie. You only know how to like, look, tell it how it is. And I appreciate the conversation. I can't wait to really, truly work with you. And we're going to put a vision board together. Hopefully the adults will follow and they will start putting some goals on a board so that they're they know what they're working toward um so brayden i want to say thank you so much i so appreciate you and i know you're going to be wonderful and do amazing things and you're going to watch this video because uh, i'm going to give you the video i'm going to you're going to watch it when you're older folks like us and when you're doing phenomenal things and changing the world um you know hopefully we remember this moment you know because you have to start somewhere. And that's what I want the older folks to know. You have to start somewhere, but you have to be, in your words, Brayden, you have to be patient. So thank you. I want to pass it to your mom. Miss Keisha, thank you so much. I, and you and Quinn have been phenomenal in your entire family. I know Austin's 17 and Austin's going to be coming aboard as well. And I'm going to link him up with some of the um, other young folks as well. Do you want to add anything, Miss Keisha? I, I do not. I, I thought it was a great interview. He, uh, you know, he he's he's definitely our uh, we've always called him our benevolent child, but he is the he pays a lot of attention. They both do. Uh, but Braden will come out of nowhere sometimes with these different things that he want to do. And, and there are always um, something that always goes towards young people, you know, as a little person, he wanted to have a, a store that children could just go in and get things and come out. You know, he just, he was always that kid. So, um, so when he has the means, we know that he will always do something that, that blesses other people. And so that's one thing we appreciate, you know, about him. We appreciate the time that you've taken with him. And this is going to be another, you know, step, another level for him because he always hear us. So now he gets to glean from someone else. So we we appreciate it. Well, hey, Quinn, I thank you so much, Miss Keisha. And Quinn, I hear you back there. You want to say anything before we uh, pass it over to to um, Reagan and Ms. Janine for Q&A. Just, just want to say thank you for being you and um, the, the effect that you've been having on our family for quite some time now. You know, we came full circle with us, me being in an, another opportunity with you for about two weeks. And then uh, life happened and I walked in and heard this voice. I said, babe, that sounds like, oh, wait a minute, that's my coach. And ever since then, we've been doing so you know, continue with your purpose. You are blessing many, many, many people. And, and um, we're just excited about this ride. So the best is yet to come. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate the three of you. Brayden, go get your, your shoes. Because I, I heard you're growing. You got to go get some shoes. Growing, <laughs> That's why we need Nate. That's why we need Nate right I'm now. I'm so glad I remembered to say, go try those shoes on. <laughs> right. <tomorrow> night. <laughs> well thank you so much we love you i know that the two of you are also getting involved with our other trading as well and so i'm just excited for the growth that your family has already had and the growth that you're going to continue to have as you learn how to fish <laughs> and you teach yeah. your kids how to fish right and yeah. i just want to say thank you so much brayden thank you for taking time with us tonight thank you thank you you're welcome. You're welcome. I'll see you guys later. Y'all have a good night. You as well. All right. All right. So hopefully, guys, put some love in the chat really quickly. Just a word, if you would.
um, uh, my word was just inspired. Like I was just so inspired having this conversation with Brayden today and last week. And it, it gave me a new kind of, it didn't even give me a new purpose. It just took me back to why we were doing this in the first place. You know, no fear, just faith, patience, learning. We're not in a hurry, right? We get in a hurry, we stumble. So um, I'm just, I'm just truly excited and um, I am going to be passing it. Oh, can you guys throw a word in the chat just to inspire, uh, lift up this young man and his family, a word that, that comes to your mind when you think about the 30 minute conversation that we just, just had, because we are going to be starting our youth program. Uh, that was the original plan. That is my passion. And Reagan is you know, she has her own passions as well, but she's she loves the young people. And we are on one accord when it comes to bringing in more families, more young people. And we actually focus on learning before earning the L first. Right. So um, thank you so much just for jumping on. We're going to make sure that it, all of you guys get this YouTube video just in case you want to share it with young people, you know. And if you have young people, they can join Nadex for free. Like if they're under 18, <clears throat> They can join over here and learn for free, right? And come along with their families. You can link them up with myself uh, or Reagan and, you know, we'll talk with them. We'll get their goals down and make sure that they understand what it takes to be successful over here. So I am going to pass it over to Miss Reagan Lynch. Um, I actually have another meeting I have to jump to. So Reagan, Miss Janine is on here as well. So we can get right down to um, some Q&A. So Miss Reagan, are you out there? Yes, ma'am. I am here. Any words that you wanna um that you you wanna add just about what you heard? Um, I just love the fact that like young people they don't have any fear. And whenever I would have to, you know, when we got into the network networking space years ago, and for me, I could say whenever I had to be uh, interviewed or I knew I had something coming up, I had to speak on a Zoom call, like I would about lose it. I would be so nervous, like practicing, taking notes, just ridiculous. And I love how young people will get on. And like you said, like they are just honest, you know, <laughs> one funny thing is like, if a little kid says you're, says you're uh, if somebody says you're ugly, you, you, maybe you're not ugly, but if a little kid says you're ugly, you're probably ugly because they're so honest. They are. And they're, <laughs> what'd you say? I said, no, they, they really are. Leave it to your six-year-old to tell us if we've gained a pound or two, you know? Right. Yeah. She's definitely going to, you know, squish on you a little bit, but, but I love the fact, well, she's sitting here too. And um, she was watching something on her tablet and she said, is that a little kid talking? Cause I had both of my monitors, uh, you know, working in the background listening. So I pulled it up and she's like, oh, that's a little kid on there talking. So it's like, for those of you who have, I see you put in the chat, you know, it was inspiring to you. Uh, you want to get your young people on you. You want them to watch this video. Uh, it will be life changing for them to see that there's other ways to make money and, and they're already in a state of learning like they have to go to school for 13 years, <laughs> you know, that is their life that is all that they know. So learning to them is not a chore. It's just what they do. So I think this is an awesome way to really get you back into your purpose Meg. you know I've been saying that for you. When, whenever we're down and as adults and we go through so much stuff, we get tired and we and we need to take a break and that's perfectly fine. But your purpose, it will all, if it is truly one of, I say purposes, Josh, because we get so wrapped up in one purpose or one job or we have to do this. But from a time that we're younger, younger kids to to high school, to college, to young adults, to adults, to you know, middle age where we are, to seniors. There's so many different things that we're going to come in into contact with that it's just if we're in a constant state of learning, it just makes life and the journey so much better. So I'm just grateful for Quinn and Keisha 
you know, just being so amazing. You know, they ask a lot of questions and then just to see that they are instilling these values into their children that there is so much more to life than just, you know, the what we see. Like, and, yeah. and their kids are actually listening and following their lead. And so I know that was a lot, but it it, it is super exciting to be thrust back into your one of your purposes, I'm sure, Megan, and I can see you lighting up, um, being able to to speak with uh, to speak with this young man. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and it's just the beginning. All of our kids are trading as well, so I'm going to shift it over to you, Reg, um, so that because you know I got um, to get rolling, but uh, we're going to go right into Q and A. So, and we're not going to be on this call long. Um, they're not going to be on the call after after nine. So we'll give really super short answers <laughs> and let's ask a lot of questions. But the main thing is, is before we get off, of, before I get off of here, I need you guys to to decide on your schedule. Brayden cannot trade during the day. He's at school. <laughs> I talk to adults all the time and they're like, well, but I'm going to miss something and I got to I can't take the trades. I'm trying to focus on my job and. Well, why are you trading at that time? You're not going to miss anything. You don't have to take every trade. And if there's not a lot of trades at nighttime, then live to trade another day the next day. But the first thing, write this down, everybody. We need to set goals. That's what, as hope creators, that's what we need to do. We have to set goals first. We have to set goals. Then we have to figure out how to execute those goals. And then we have to believe that we can do it. Those three things. We set goals. I'm not trading on Mondays. I'm going to, I work until five o'clock. So I'm going to start taking my first trades around seven o'clock. I might only take one trade. I'm not going to start in my live account until I have at least $500 to start with. I'm not going to take trades that, you know, are, are before I really know what I'm doing, I'm not taking any of my own trades. People have done that and lost money. So you have to really set goals and then you have to, execute those goals. That means even when the market looks good, we may have lost two trades. We're going to lose sometimes because it's the election season and Trump is running for president and all of those things are going to affect the markets. So maybe we just learn, right? We give up going out to eat so we can pay our hundred dollars so that we can practice, practice, practice and get on these calls and ask questions. And then we execute and then we believe that we can do it. So those three things I want to leave you guys with. So Reagan, if you can start with questions and I'm going to unmute everybody. Um, hold on for a second. Let me pause the recording.